Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Block here on the beach in Gdynia, Poland, uh, the gorgeous Gdynia, Poland, surrounded by oh, a Ferris wheel over here and a roller coaster over here and beautiful women on the beach over there and 400 of the world's best sailors right here on this beach. Uh, we are, of course, at the 49er and NACRA 17 European Championship here in Poland, as we have been for two days already. Day three and the final day of qualifying is ahead. And, um, you know, this is the time when uh, on the Magic Marine Beach Walk, we tell you about the weather, we tell you what's going to happen. It's bubble day, which means half the fleet gets knocked out of gold, gold, uh, metal, gold fleet contention. That's a big deal. We'll talk about that in a second. First, though, our sponsor, one of the best uh, uh, manufacturers of dinghy racing gear and big boat racing gear in the world. Half this fleet, it seems like, has, uh, uh, has all Magic Marine gear. And uh, very few people know how to handle North Sea conditions in a dinghy like Magic Marine. Head over to 49er.org, click on that Magic Marine uh, online store in the corner, and put in the code EUROS2018 when you check out. And you get all, a full 18% off of your order. That's serious money, folks. So thanks to Magic Marine and uh, for all they do in the sport. Thanks also to Gadenia here. They've hosted us so far, and it's been spectacular. Uh, we've had two good days of racing. We have another good day, it looks like, ahead. Um, and another day of light to moderate breeze. Max wind is supposed to be 10 to 12 knots, and we're probably going to see more, more of the 8, 9 knot range, pretty similar to what we've seen uh, all week here in the morning. Of course, yesterday afternoon we had more for these guys, and uh, they didn't, they didn't, these guys, the first guy I'm going to talk to here, didn't have the best day yesterday, but, I mean, Oman has been coming on as a force in sailing, and uh, Musab al-Hadi, how are you doing, my buddy? Good, yeah, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. You know, you guys uh, looked really good that first day yesterday. It was a little bit tougher, though. Yeah, we had the first day uh, as that was the, the favorite uh, day for us. Uh, the condition was nice and quiet, flat water, bit of shifting, not too much, but uh, more like sailing in Oman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, similar to what we had in Oman, but suddenly yesterday we had a uh, shock of sailing uh, on the water, just breezy on, and uh, yeah, we wasn't expect that to be honest. And, uh, I mean, for the breeze, yeah, we need to put more hours for sure. That's, that's our weakness. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it looks like today you should have more of what you like. I don't think we're going to see big waves here today, but uh, you think you have, you have a pretty good chance of getting into Gold Fleet if you can push a little hard today. Well, yeah, this is it. Today it's, uh, it's uh, the last day, and we just only have three days, three races, uh, comparing the four races that we had yesterday. But, uh, yeah, the goal is, uh, I think, for everybody as same as us, uh, try to push it as hard as you can, and uh, just only three races today. And then after that, it's going to be a different game for sure. But, uh, yeah, the goal is uh, to push, to push uh, the limit today. Well, look, you missed out on Rio by one spot. I mean, you almost went to the Olympics and you missed out by one spot. But, <clears throat> I mean, everyone knows in all of Arabia, nobody's doing more in sailing than Oman. You think you're ready for, uh, for Tokyo? You think you'll make it? Well, uh, yeah, it's a big question. Was every, every team is the uh, same, so working hard for that. And, uh, of course, yeah, we missed by one, one spot, but, uh, again, we have to remember that is that we have another youth coming up, and uh, we have a uh, next generation, the new teams coming up. So, uh, I mean, it's not an easy life, you know, uh, but uh, it's just we need to push and uh, believe in ourselves. It's not terrible, though. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> good. No, it's good. No, but there's a chance. Yeah, there's a chance. Yeah. What's the temperature in Oman right now? Uh, 45 degrees, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it's much different than here, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thank you very much, Musab. Good luck today. And Thanks, so, guys, folks, we got 90. Come on, come along with me, uh, uh, Poto. We have 90, um, 92 boats here in the 49er class. That means that 46 of them are going to advance that goal fleet. Let's go around the bow here so we can talk to our old friend Carlitos. So, Carlos, I think uh, I think we have to start this one off. Obviously, Carlos Robles. How are you, buddy? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Is it Carlos? Carlos. Carlos. Yeah, yeah. Espanol. <laughs> but wait a second. Turn around here second. for a second. What is that? Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a second, right? Because our question for the day on on our website yeah. is: Would you switch nations to represent your country at the Olympics to go to the Olympics? And obviously, your answer is yes. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've always been Brazilian too. Always lived in Spain, but my mom, she's Brazilian. So I always had dual nationality, and a good opportunity came up. And of course, I think this is more uh, personal. For in my case, it's more of a of a personal thing going to the games, and not a I don't know. It's not about pride in your country. It's about I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, your own goal. I, I imagine it depends on the country you're from. But in our case, we I didn't have much funding or help in Spain, so it was a hard. Well, and obviously, you've got a, a crowded field in Spain with uh, with yeah, a, with yeah, a very well-known sailor that you know that right. Definitely, it was hard for me to continue like that. I mean, the opportunity was 
better for me in Brazil, and I just went for it. And uh, sailing with Marco, how's that going? It's going well. It's going well. This championship hasn't started well, but we still got days to go. So now, Marco said your Portuguese is not great. Ah, I mean my accent is not great. <laughs> I can speak it, but not not the best accent. And how has your support been from the Brazilian Federation uh, compared to what you experienced with uh, uh, Spain? It's been great, awesome, actually. Uh, I mean, they're helping us and they believe in me as a young guy still, so that's great. I mean, I can't complain at all. Well, I've seen you sail a few times. I believe in you too, but you're not having a great one so far, and you guys no. are kind of close to the bubble here. Yeah, we're, we're in the, I call it the octopus, you yeah. know, in the middle, in the fight, where we have to keep going. We've, we have a pretty good day today we should I mean we're gonna fight for the gold fleet but yeah yesterday wasn't a good day for us we had good starts but we struggled a little, a little bit with speed so that didn't help well good luck today and uh, good to see you obviously he says yes on the question of the day thanks guys thanks Marco good luck so and, and I'll, I'll tell you a quick thing about that Carlos um let's grab him here and there, what, what, what position are they in? 30. 30. Um, so Carlos uh, Robles, he, he, he was real political about it, but you could, say, you could hear in what Carlos was saying that he was really unhappy with the level of support he was provided by the Spanish Sailing Federation in the last cycle. And, you know, the, um, uh, Botin and Mara got to go. And uh, there are those who said that they were probably not the best qualified to go. I don't know if that's the answer. But Carlos, uh, Carlos came up with a good solution, and interestingly enough, there, you know, in the in the sometimes political decision of choosing who goes to the Olympics, a guy with a name can often get the, the spot over a guy without the name. And, and you know, while Diego Botin is a fabulous sailor, his his family is very well connected, and there are those who said that that might have been an issue. Who knows? Here we got some brothers, the the, the less the less uh, famous Spanish Alonso boys. All right, how are you guys doing? All right, let me come around here. Now, the reason I want to talk to you guys, it's bubble day, and, uh, and uh, you guys are deeper than I would expect you to be. Yeah. What do you, what's going on out there? Yeah, we are having no good uh, starts, and when it's uh, big fleets and three groups, it's penalized you a lot. So we have to push on the starts, and then we are not choosing the right side of the, of the race course. So. so it's not boat speed, it's just, just some mental stuff? No, we don't think about that because sometimes we, we have a very good speed, but when you are back on the fleet, it's really difficult to, to go fast, no? Do you guys have, um, uh, do you have the ability to like pay attention? No, there's no way to pay attention to the scores throughout the day. You don't know who you'd have to like race against to get into the, the goal fleet. There's no way to know, right? No, we are trying to, to push hard today, and we are close to the 25 uh, top boats. And we know that there is no too much points there, so if we, if we do the, the, right, the right way today, it's, it's going to be good. All right, our question for the day online is, and we just asked Carlos Robles this question, yeah. if, you could, if you could switch countries to get you to the games, would you do it? Would you ever do that? What, what, you, what do you mean? I don't if you could, uh, by, by, si, si puede cambiar tu, tu nacionalidad ah, yeah. para, para ir a, a los Olympics, yeah, 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 would no. you do it? Yeah, uh, no, no, we, we are Argentina, in fact. Uh, we were born in, in Argentina and uh, we came to Spain 20 years ago. Uh, we have many times to, the choice to do that and we think that is not the, the right way. It's, it's what, what we think. Right, good. Uh, we try to, to go with Spain, we, we sail for Spain and we, we are going to push as, as, hard, as hard as we can. You're proud to represent Spain? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah? Right. <laughs> hey, guys, have a great day out there. Thank hey, you. Good luck. So unexpected bubblers, and uh, I think we got maybe one more before we set, get out. we got to get out on the water here shortly. Who do we got? India. This is really cool, and there's no way I can say these names probably, but, you know, India, how many uh, Niners did they buy? Oh, they've probably got uh, 30, at least 30 boats, and they've probably had uh, 15 boats training in Lake Garda in May this year. So they're definitely making a push to try and get that Asian slot at the Olympics. It's amazing how much power can, is behind almost anything that India does just because of the volume. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. it's such a massive place, and there's so much money and so many people that when they do something, they never do it halfway, you know? They have a, t a ton of people and a, you know potentially a ton of resources available. So and and they've they've hired good coaching, and uh, you know it's I think it's now just a matter of getting some boat time. Uh.
for these guys. What's crazy too is like India is. A suit like a, it's a maritime nation. It's got this crazy maritime tradition. It's got some all this amazing sea. But until recently, you don't see a lot of Indians on the on the sort of high level world sail, world sailing stage. How are you, buddy? Ta- pronounce your name for me. Uh, Ganapati. Gana? Yeah. Gana. That's a lot easier. Yeah. And you drive the boat? Yes. I do. Listen, where are you from in India? Uh, Chennai. Chennai. Down south. Yeah. In, on the water. Yes. Yeah. It's a lot of water in India. A massive coastline. <laughs> we don't use it well enough. Yeah. Right. Why is that? Uh, I think uh, sport is not really supported. And, Other than uh, football or cricket? Uh, football recently, but... Uh, <laughs> come on up, come on uh, up. <laughs> but uh, cricket supported really well. And I think most people are scared of the water. <laughs> scared of the water? No, you don't learn, people don't, don't learn how to swim when they're young? No, they don't. They don't. Not many. And uh, I think they assume it's a very expensive sport. But I think to have fun, you can sail with not so much money. Yeah. Obviously, if you're going to do it in 49ers, it's a lot more expensive. Now, pronounce your name for me. Varun. Varun. All right. Varun, you guys, uh, you're part of this big Indian experiment here. Like, I think you guys had, what, 12 boats in Garda or something like that? It was a whole bunch of you in Lake Garda. You guys have a bunch of Niners now. You're training with each other, right? So in, in Garda, we had two 49er and two FX. Back home, we have 10. But uh, it's, it's, it's growing now. It's, it's not very uh, good compared to the European fleet. But we've been doing it for a while, since uh, 2014. A few big breaks here and there. But uh, I think uh, we had a good base on the 29er, which, which has really helped us here. That's pretty key. Now, just push in a little bit here. Now, you guys had a really good start to the regatta. Um, and uh, what position are they in right now? 26. 26. So, I mean, you're looking really good, and you have more light air today. Is this the stuff you want to be in? I think we've just, like, started to, like, improve in all wind ranges, and, you know, we, we're we here for p- probably the experience. Like, it's we're getting the boat speed up, and everything's just falling into track. So, I mean, we're pretty happy with the way we're going, and any condition, we just want to go out there and see how we're doing against these guys because... You have like almost the top sailors over here, and we're kind of improving slowly. So, I mean, you look great out there so far, you know. And, and obviously, you're looking you're looking good on the Gold Fleet. This is all about that fight for that last Asian spot for the Olympics, right? It is, and uh, for us, the Asian Games that are coming that's up. Right, that's really soon in uh, Malaysia. No, uh, Indonesia. Indonesia. Yeah, it's like a mini Olympics for Asia. Yeah, so uh, so the country and the federation, everyone look at it as a big thing. Even though the standard... You know, there'll only be five or six boats or whatever, right? No, I think there are 10 oh, that's good. Asian countries. So, yeah. I think uh, skips are slowly going up as 470 goes down in Asia. And uh, I think we should be... Like, another few years and maybe we'll be consistent Gold Fleet guys. <laughs> no, not yet in Gold Fleet. How do you feel about the way the Asian fleets are stacking up right now? Where would you place you got, you, you know, you in position with the rest of the, of the, t- the countries that are going to be fighting for that last spot? Uh, in the recent Asian sailing that got over, we won. So uh, I think we, if we keep everything together and uh, go down the coast, okay, we should be a big contender for the Asian Games gold. Awesome. Well, guys, have a good luck out there today. Hopefully, make it through to gold, and it's just great to see another country working their way up the ranks. You know, Thank you so much. awesome. And listen, guys, that's you know, that's what the Olympics is about, right? I mean, you can say it's about aspiring to gold and aspiring to greatness, but the reality is it's about bringing people together. It's about bringing new countries into new sports and, and them growing their relationships with other people. And uh, that's why we it's so great to see Oman right on the cusp of, of Gold Fleet, to see India looking strong for Gold Fleet, um, and uh, plenty of other nations here too. We've got two Chinese teams here, um, super young, like the 17, 18-year-old Chinese teams here working with full coaching and, and really trying to work their way up and get that la- last spot and inspire people back home. So it's great to see. This is the last day uh, before these guys are culled into Gold and Silver Fleet, so it's a really dramatic day for a lot of them, and it looks like it's going to be another day of sailing. We'll see you shortly. Thanks to Magic Marine for this beach walk.